Today's episode of the BS Podcast, the first one of 2017, brought to you by SeatGeek, our presenting sponsor, the only fan-friendly app for buying and selling tickets for sports and music. Drop your old ticket app. Use one built for 2017 and beyond. You can even do absolutely everything on your phone. Download the free SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com. We're also brought to you by Channel 33. That's the Ringer's pop culture podcast that just launched our new show. The Sports Movie Hall of Fame. I am the host along with Chris Ryan. We inducted Jerry Maguire and Moneyball already. We have another one coming this week. Subscribe to Channel 33 right now to hear every episode. Sal, what Sports Movie Hall of Fame show do you want to do with us? Oh, you name it. What's your uh, favorite one, though? Or what's one you just Vision have a lot Quest? of thoughts on? Oh, Vision Is Quest. Is that a love story or is that a sports movie? I'm not sure. I mean, it's both, but... No, it's a sports movie. Okay. Yeah, all right. We'll I'll do Vision Quest. Right. Uh, check out TheRinger.com, not just for all of our great content, but because I have a new column coming this week, later in the week. All right. This is it. The Playoff Round 1 Podcast. Here we go. I'm here with a traumatized cousin <laughs> Sal. Never been this bad. I don't know what was the worst idea. Me naming my show any given Wednesday. Stop and there. being unable to oh. move the show off of Wednesday <laughs> if if maybe it wasn't the right day. Yeah. Or you naming your thing the cousin Sal sure thing. <laughs> and leaving yourself no leeway in case it turned out not to be a sure thing one yeah. of these weeks. You're doing this on Facebook, you're in an own six slump. Well, Wednesday's a definite day of the year. A sure thing could mean you know, just fade me. That's a sure thing. Oh, no, so do you. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> okay, so now you go the other way. Yeah. You can get this back. Oh, I'm, I'm, I've am i been awful. I don't know what it is. I would compare this to um, a boxer, maybe maybe a little like Rousey. Oh, yeah? After the first fight, when Rousey lost her way, mm -hmm. but then didn't get it back. I think you can get it back. Rousey, what do you mean? She's She's got it back? No, no, no. She didn't get it back. Oh, I think I you can get it back. Oh, I can get it back. Okay. Rousey lost. She disappeared for a year. Yeah. And then came back and fought somebody who had a similar style to the person who knocked her out the exact same way and right. got pounded even worse. I think you can adjust. All right. I, I think you you may have had a couple of missteps, one of which was you put the Raiders in a tease. Yeah. You put a bad quarterback in a tease, which you don't that, like that, that just usually. told me that you just lost your fundamentals a little bit. Really? I thought getting a touchdown against Denver could be a close game, but Denver doesn't score that much usually. You didn't think that was one of those if they're down 10 nothing, the game's over, though? Uh, yeah, I thought that almost immediately after I saw a couple <laughs> minutes of the game. But You can yeah, get it back. That was bad. That it's was a bad. confidence shake. What you need to do is what Aaron Rodgers did. Just run the table. Just Aaron Rodgers was it? like, I don't like my team doesn't seem confident right now. Uh -huh. I'm going to say we're going to run the table. And then okay. he told Peter King, now who knows if this was bullshit right. or not, but he's like, I thought our team needed some swagger. So I threw that out there. And if it didn't happen, it was on me. Interesting. Right. I think you need to throw it out there that you're going to go 10 and 1 okay. in the playoffs. I'm going to contact Peter King and get this done <laughs> you right now. You should afterwards. call Peter King and tell him, <laughs> tell him you're guaranteeing 10 and 1. The problem is these round one playoff games are terrible, which oh. we're going to get to. But, uh, Should we talk about Rousey just as long as you were to go from bad to good? We, well, we did we had, win that. We had our Lions bet, which we've discussed mm. many times on this podcast, that they would not make the playoffs along with the Browns and Niners, who mm -hmm. want to combine three games. Mm -hmm. Somehow the Lions did make the playoffs winning nine. And Do they made us me, sweat it out. It was a, it was a vicious, vicious it, it trick terrible. the gambling gods played on us. We, so we could have been, we should have been done with this bet. We should have lost it a month ago, but the Lions kept losing. The Packers yeah. kept winning. We just needed another wild card team to sneak in there, and we needed it to be Washington. We had a chance to hedge, <laughs> and we could have hedged with the Redskins against the Giants. Although I don't know really how we even would have hedged that. Just bet the Giants? No. So yeah, like the Redskins to make the playoffs was about even odds. So you could go, you could, we could have taken the other side of that. Oh, yeah. That's but then we also would have had to sweat out the Packer game, but we were both pretty confident yeah. in the Packers win. Right. I will say, though, I didn't hear one person like the Lions all week in any walk right. of life. Either people in my life, mm -hmm. people I read, people on TV. Never heard anybody like, no, don't sleep on this Lions team at home. Everyone was like, the Packers, Packers, Packers. Yeah. And then the Packers actually won and covered, mm -hmm. which doesn't happen that often. Everybody won on that Packers game. Yeah, and that they moved it to the night game. Like people maybe had lost money. Like this is the one you're going to double up on. Yeah, right. they gave it was like free money. 
the one so there were three potential teases in week 17 yesterday the chiefs the uh the redskins everyone who needed to win won except and the, then the, except Falcons. the redskins yeah right but you, i think the redskins probably killed some people you could say your patriots were in there too it was, it was a pretty won. high line yeah, yeah i think what everybody forgot and thomas boswell wrote a good piece about this last night in the washington post is that the giants and the redskins just hate each other mm-hmm and the Giants were like, screw this. We're not rolling over so you get in the playoffs. And they played as hard as just about any team yesterday. It's amazing. They really wanted it. A they benched that, Odell in the second half, and that was it. Yeah, that could have slot, that sat their starters. No reason. No, they're locked into the five seed, except that they knew we bet that. And they will <laughs> screw us <laughs> every it. turn we make. They're going <laughs> to screw us, the Giants. So. The team that I keep looking at, you know, you think like there's 12 playoff teams. All right, who should have made it that didn't? Mm -hmm. I think the Cardinals were the team that, just if you play the season 10 times, I think they make it like eight as the six seed. Right. And then maybe one, everything goes wrong. And then there's one where they had a, a season like they had this time. They lose in week one to the Patriots. Well, that's it. If they get up for that game, maybe it changes everything. Maybe if they didn't just right, take, the, take the your tie. Patriots for granted. Well, that's yeah, so. And tied, sure. But they missed it. People forget, though, they missed the field goal to win the game. Right. The guy had a field goal. He just missed it. Mm -hmm. And then they had another field goal from like 25 to beat the Seahawks in the tie, which they missed. Right. So those are two wins. Mm -hmm. So now they're nine and seven instead of seven, eight, one. And then they had uh, the Rams, I think, in like week five. At they home, couple. they lose to Case Keenum 17 13 mm -hmm. on a late uh, Tavon Austin punt return. Case Keenum gets the go ahead thing, but Palmer got knocked out, was in the concussion protocol. Right. But really, they played the Rams and Niners four times. Mm hmm. And they somehow ended up with seven wins total. And that team had a lot of talent. Like that, To me, it's like, how do you not win 10 games with your schedule? I look at the AFC and I look at the Texans right now. And I say, and you now even the Raiders, even though it's not their fault, but how much better are the Broncos and Ravens than that game that we're going to see on the Texans Raiders? Yeah. I mean, I would even throw in uh, the Bengals. Cincinnati? I was going to say How possibly. many teams? <laughs> That's a good one. How many teams would be favored over the Texans or the Raiders no, who didn't, didn't make, make the, the playoffs? playoffs? Yeah, hold on. In the AFC or just the I'm going to go in general. Would the Cardinals be favored over either of those teams? I think so. Tampa Bay? Tampa Bay, definitely. Um, Washington? Uh, yeah, I mean, sure. Or Tennessee uh, would. The Colts, maybe. I mean, it's at least a pick them with any of these teams. Yeah. I don't, I don't love that Colts I know, team. but there's a half dozen. Who would you rather have, the Bills or either of those playoff teams? Probably the two playoff teams. I don't know. The Vikings? Uh, the Saints definitely would be favored. Chargers, Saints for sure. Saints and Bucks definitely. Cards maybe. Eagles? I mean, those two teams yeah. are about as good as the Eagles. They're all pick them games for sure. And that's the thing with the Raiders. Like, they lose Carr, and then you think, well, there's enough there. And then you, then you actually watch them, and it's like, well, their receivers are now out. They have these two good receivers who are now yeah. useless because they're quarterbacks. Anybody can stack the run against them. And their defense was kind of a little smoke and mirrors -y all year, except for Khalil Mack. Well, everyone's got a very definite opinion about MVP this year. And it's very strange to me because you shouldn't. You could, And, no. and if, if that Raiders game showed you anything, it's like maybe Derek Carr's the MVP. Uh, maybe Matt Ryan, 35 points in the first half. Thank you for uh, only scoring three in the second half and a worst backdoor cover in the uh, history of the game. But Do you uh, want to talk about that? Uh, what was it, 38-13? They scored 19 points, yeah, because they scored 19-0 19 in the fourth quarter. For I did not put the Falcons as my one of my super contest picks because that seven and a half points in the Drew Brees garbage time touchdown, yeah. I just kept looking at it. It was the only reason. It was like, boy, you could be up 14 with two minutes left. Oh, and yeah. The Saints would have the ball, exactly. and I'd feel like I was going to lose. I, so I stayed happened. away. But, God bless Drew Brees, but and he has he did a Super get an Bowl. Onside, right? Yeah, the onside kick, and that's yeah. the way to do it. Did you see it? Yeah. It was kicked to the first level of guys who don't even look at the ball. They They're go just to trying block. to block. Yeah. They really don't look at it. it the was hard kicked. line drive to right. the legs. It was kicked at their feet. They didn't, and even when it hit their feet, no one even scrambled to recover. But Drew Brees, he's a Hall of Famer. He's got great numbers. He's got a Super Bowl win. But he's getting dangerously close to fifty percent of his yards being meaningless garbage time. Yeah. He was kind of quietly our garbage time MVP right. this year. Every seven and nine Normally year. Normally it's Matt Stafford. Mm -hmm. Every seven and nine year he gets, you know, that percentage goes up and up. Last year was Bortles. Mm -hmm. This year was probably Breeze. Had to be Breeze. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. You couldn't kill him. So MVP, let's talk about that. Yeah, so. I'm the biggest homer you know. Sure. Especially you, post the flake gate, I it briefly drove me insane. And you don't say Brady. You don't think Brady. I think he had to go twelve and zero to win the MVP. Wow. 
Yeah, I think if he went 12 and 0, you, you'd have to be like, all right, he's the MVP. So Ryan's plus 120, Rogers two to one, Brady three to one, Zeke Elliott three to uh, I don't think Brady the- Brady two to one, Elliott three to one, Prescott then 75 to one, and Le'Veon Bell 75 to one. I had a uh, I checked the sports book odds. Matt Ryan was plus 140, uh-huh. and Elliott and Dak were like 30 to one. Check it again. Hold on. Or maybe that was a mistake. I'll look right now. But Matt Ryan's definitely the favorite. Right? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Ryan 120, Rogers two, Brady two. Oh, Elliot 30 to one. Yeah. Oh, so it's right. You're right. So it's really those three. What I got to say, I think I think it's, it's absolutely. I said it last week. I think it's absolutely Matt Ryan. You do. Yeah. They 310 yards a game, mm-hmm. 38 touchdowns, seven picks. He missed Julio. I was wrong last week. He only missed him for two and a half games. Basically, much tougher schedule than the Pats played. Really? Like think he so? basically played. Yeah, he played a lot of they good defense. They just beat defenses. the Rams and Niners down the stretch in the Saints defense. Yeah, but I mean, during the season, like they played, mm. I think they played a tougher schedule. Brady, Brady just kind of lucked out with, with those 12 games that he had, like Landry Jones instead of Roethlisberger. That Steelers game was kind of the big litmus test game, mm-hmm. and then Roethlisberger doesn't play. Seattle was the one really good team they played, and that's not even a top five team. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What if you did I win? I love Brady, but it's it's just hard for me to believe 12 games wins the MVP. What if you did win above replacement thing and you just hooked the most average quarterback? And who? that's probably like Andy Dalton at this point, right? If Andy Dalton's on Atlanta, what's their record? I like this game. Yeah. Well, it, but if you're doing this game, We'll then, do it for every team. If but, he's but, on, but then Dak's the MVP if you do this. Well, go, let's Because if it. you replace Dak with any other backup QB... There are three win teams. Not backup. I'm saying average, like the 15th best quarterback in the NFL. But with Dak, you'd have to replace him with an average backup. No, just let put Andy Dalton on the Cowboys, put him on the Patriots, put him on the Falcons. What are those teams' records? So you're saying like if Dalton was the Falcons quarterback, right. they go eight and eight. They maybe I think they go like nine and seven. If Garoppolo was the Pats quarterback the whole year, yeah, I think we go ten and Still six or eleven digits? and five. Yeah, yeah. I do. Right. I do. As as awesome as Brady was, I, I just think that I, I think, think the whole the team and the coaching and the schedule, mm-hmm. you know, I give it to Aaron Rodgers. I do. So you think if Dalton was the Packers quarterback, the thing is they only won ten games. They they're going to go six and ten, seven and nine with him. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good good enough. It's difference. A sh- let's let's just say it's a shitty MVP year. I don't know. I think it's pretty compelling. No, I mean it's I compelling, like it. but there's no, there's no. Oh, that guy's definitely ran away with it. Everybody's got some uh, sort of yeah. piccadillo. Like Rogers didn't look good the first two months. I guess, but now he's throwing passes to Geronimo Allison and finding him. Like I know, it does seem like every five plays, Rogers is good for a 19 yard pass play. You know, like yeah. Well, he had that one play around the in the red zone when he just scrambled around for nine seconds and did Rogers. You knew it was going to happen. Yeah, too, it was like, right. He's still the best at that. Yeah. Brady was Brady was great and the two interceptions thing is out of its mind. But I, I think he two, I think he had to go twelve and zero to win it. Mm. I think he'll get votes, but I, I think Matt Ryan's gonna end up winning it because as we said last week, eleven and five, they got boned over on the Julio call in Seattle. They mm-hmm. should have won that game, the interference, they didn't get it. And then the two point reversion, which was his fault. Right. But I don't know. I, I think they were actually better than an eleven and five team. I'm okay with any of those. Four even, get but not it. Uh, Andy Dalton. You're not okay with that. No, not Andy Dalton. But even if you put like, even do the replacement with uh, Zeke Elliott. Put like Spencer Ware. Let's say he's the most average running back. What's the Cowboys' record with Spencer Ware? Right. I think I mean, it's you, like nine and seven. If we're gonna do this, you could you could say maybe Le'Veon Bell is the MVP. Yeah. If you replace him with, I'm trying to think of somebody. Well, the problem is D'Angelo Williams had a couple of good games before Bell got there. Oh yeah, you're right. So um, there, maybe there's no MVP. Maybe yeah. we roll it Let's over. Skip it this year. We've had NBA years like this where yeah. I was just I thought they should roll it over like in skins, and the right. next one's worth two trophies. As as long as we're talking about getting rid of awards or skipping awards, how about that Sam Bradford record? Let's throw that out the window. He's the most accurate passer of all time in single season. What is it? What does that even mean? Uh, he it, just throws the most accurate check down three exactly. three yard completions. Yeah, we've seen it. We've seen it all year long. Like, that was a rough trade, man. What are they going to do? Because they made that trade. They were really adamant. Like, we mm-hmm. think this is a Super Bowl team. Right. We think this team, we have the pieces. And it was like they completely fell apart. Uh, 
Hey, I want to talk about MeUndies really quick. They sponsored the first podcast we ever did. They sent me a big box of comfortable underwear. I've been wearing them ever since. Wow. Every pair of MeUndies made from sustainably sourced modal, a fabric that's three times softer than cotton. Once you try them on, you'll understand why it has the rep as the world's most comfortable underwear. MeUndies has dozens of styles, limited edition prints to help you make a statement with your underwear, boxers, trunks, thongs, bikinis, you name it. My favorite are the boxer briefs. Shipping free in the U.S. and Canada. Try them on, and if they aren't the most comfortable, best feeling undies you've ever had, they will refund you and let you keep your first pair for free. For a limited time, every BS podcast listener gets 20% off their first order. Go to special URL, meundies.com slash BS. Again, 20% off plus free shipping. 20% off your first order at meundies.com slash BS. All right, coach of the year. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's your guy again. It has to be, right? Yeah. And I hate to say it, but then why wouldn't you say Brady? You, you'd say because he, he could have done it with Garoppolo. Yeah. It's a, 12 games is tough for me. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I like this. I it like is. this from you. I, I just feel like I, I, I already feel like I'm enough of a homer, but to argue no. that somebody's 12 games <laughs> would, are better than Matt Ryan's 16 doesn't yeah. feel right for me. He just, Brady is, I don't know, you know, what, what could you here's say the, about here's him? The case he makes for, you pay, though. He really does, he does. make you pay. If you screw up, look, look at the dolphins and I needed them to cover yesterday and they, they didn't, you know, they were driving with eight minutes left and fumbled the seven, but, uh, he just makes you pay. He, he'll find element. He'll be patient and he picks you apart. And that's nothing we haven't heard about Brady before. Here's the reason that if I had to vote, I would vote for Brady because it wasn't his fault that he got suspended for four games. So if you're going to make that case to be like, why should this guy be penalized? Cause he yeah. got railroaded by the NFL. What do you Vote mean? Anyway. He cheated. What are you talking he about? He did not cheat. Oh, he was exonerated in every step of the way. Oh, I thought we agreed on this. Is there anybody else you would vote for coach of the other than Belichick? Um, Jack Del Rio. Del Rio. They're talking about. Little. Yeah. Uh, they usually go for whoever kind of came out of nowhere versus the Popovich Belichick guy who just every year is awesome. But the Pats went 14 and two, which mm -hmm. I don't think we've had the highest wins total in like five or six years. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think yeah. every usually they how, are how does 12, Belichick 4, 13, fare? In this? Do they just usually skip him or does he get it? I think that media just doesn't like him. But does he has he won in the last how many times has he won the last coach of the year? I I think only like once. Let's look this up. Let's talk about coaches really quick because there's six open jobs: mm -hmm. Denver, San Diego, Jacksonville, Buffalo, Rams, Niners, and possibly the Saints if Sean Payton gets traded. Which job would you want? If you're a coach, Denver, you're a hot candidate. Of course, Denver. You'd want Denver. Sure. Yeah. They're they're the closest, I think. You're working for John Elway, though. Yeah. Who does seem like he has a healthy good. ego at this point. He's run out a couple coaches. He's run out a couple QBs. <laughs> he went against Tebow. He murdered Tim Tebow's career. Right. I don't know. I'd be a little scared to work for him. Well, I don't think you're going three and thirteen. So I think you're getting you're not getting Chip Kelly. You're not gonna get Can their first year. True. Right. You don't like have a quarterback. What kind of injury? I would want San Diego. You want San Diego? Yeah. I wanted to talk about the way. I'm playing in I'm playing in Carson, California for two years in front of twenty seven thousand people, which I actually think is this crazy experiment that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. That would really be do? awesome. Twenty seven thousand people would be incredible. What happens Just when packed they, in? What happens when they don't pack it? What happens yeah, when how can they full? not get twenty seven thousand fans? You watch. <laughs> Are you going to Carson? No. no, but there's a bunch <laughs> of people over there that would. I guess so. I don't like this whole San Diego thing moving because it's you terrible. talked about it last week and how they're going to have to pay whoever's going to the Rams, you think maybe Gruden, $60 million. You have to do the same for the Chargers. Now you're spending $100 million on two L.A. coaches on bad teams. It's like, I don't think you have to do it with the Chargers because you know? I think they're cl closer than that. I closer think they have to good winning. players. Yeah. Because yeah. next year they'll have Keenan Allen back. Gordon will be healthy. They have Bosa. They have a quarterback. They have more they have players the space. fans could be excited about. The they, fans are already done They have with another the number five pick, number five, number six, whatever mm -hmm. that is. I think they. I I think that's a good job. Yeah, I just. Think I would much say the Rams thing. I look at that. I wrote down some Rams quotes that I read yesterday. This is from defensive end William Hayes. We just need to change the culture, man. We have to create a winning culture around here. That's what we're lacking right now. And I then like tight that. end Lance Kendrick said. We just need to really have someone that can motivate us. That's right. Not that Jeff Fisher didn't, but <laughs> no, we need someone not. to motivate us. So we need someone to be on our butts when we, when we mess up. Not that Jeff Fisher didn't. Crazy. They didn't mean no motivation. I think that team is too dinosaurs scarred. Dinosaurs don't agree, uh, exist. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, I think that team lost 20 plus points, six out of their last seven. 
Wow. I think that's the worst job because not only that, but you have, I mean, how many people went to that game yesterday? Not like they, 20, they said 55,000. No that, way. That wasn't 30. There wasn't 30,000. No way. That's what I mean. They're, like the LA doesn't care about these teams. They're going to feel no. the same way about the Chargers. No, and I, I actually think, could you see the Chargers, if they don't sign a lease, stay in like kind of San Diego, Orange County, LA limbo for two years and then just jump to... Well, there's some you, other place that needs a football team. You could bet now that it's you have to lay three to win one that the that the Chargers are coming to LA. Like it seems like it's a done deal for next that they're year. They're coming to LA. Yeah, I don't understand it. I don't either. I don't understand how they're going to fill that giant stadium every week. <laughs> there were sixteen home games a year in LA, and I don't understand who's going. No, uh, even if the team is thirteen and three, I think it would be dicey. But does it matter? I mean, from an owner's perspective, does the franchise increase in value so much that it doesn't matter if you fill the fill as I long mean, as you don't it? read the articles about yourself? If you don't fill the stadium, is, are, 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 is your net value going up that much? So it doesn't matter. And well, for Crocky, it's great. He doesn't care. Right. He's he's in the number two market. I don't mm -hmm. understand the point with the Chargers. Right. And if what's weird is maybe they should go to Oakland. Mm hmm. Because it seems like Oakland should have a football team. The Oakland Chargers. That'd know. be weird. Yeah. At that point, you just change your name, right? You do yeah. like what uh, the Tennessee Titans did. You right. know, from the Houston Oilers to the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, you you pretend you don't even have a legacy. Were you surprised Chip Kelly got fired? A little bit. Like, I, I don't I don't love the guy, but that is kind of, that's a great F you if he actually had a chance to go back to Oregon and told them no, and then they canned him two, after a year. Two one year and out coaches, I don't think. We'll mm -hmm. ever see again in our lifetime. No, right. I was thinking, uh, I, I, I'm trying to put this together in my head, but Colin Kaepernick won. Like, I don't know, does every team do this? They vote on like the most courageous player on the team or something. He won for the Niners. The Niners, the teammates vote. I wonder if like upper management is like, Chip Kelly kind of made a hero of this guy. We didn't even want him starting. And all of a sudden, not only was he decent, but now he's well liked by the teams. Like, we need to start everything over. It was a mess. That's interesting. I didn't think of that. I, I was just thinking that they hired this guy who was supposedly innovative. Yeah. And when you watched him play, it was one of the least innovative teams. Mm -hmm. That's the part I didn't understand. Like when he came to the Eagles, it was really fun for like three weeks. I didn't necessarily thought what he did was going to work. Right. But at least he was different. And they the way they looked was different in the plays they ran. And now by the end of the San Francisco thing, they were just conventional. I think they needed Kaepernick to do never something. scrambled or did anything. Right. But there was also like the leadership thing where I mean they came off like a season, an off season where three 25 year olds retired, you know? So right. they needed somebody in that clubhouse, like make it ex exciting to play for you. And he didn't he didn't do that. Would you know. rather be the Browns or the Niners? I think the Niners. I think I'd rather be the Browns. Oh, they're just so cursed. They got the first pick and the ninth pick. <laughs> In a really good draft. I'm going to get my cough out of here. <laughs> they never get They don't have a quarterback still. Aren't they going to take Miles Garrett? Uh, He's going to be know. the number one pick. I do this every year. I know nothing about college not football. Ready. And every year I know who the number one pick is going to be. Everyone tries to be, right. oh, maybe this guy, maybe this guy. It's like, you yeah. know it's going to be is the guy who's the best quarterback. Right, right. That's who it is every year. And they're going to excited. Their ninth pick is going to be the the tackle for Central Michigan. Like, who cares at this point? But, uh, you know, what do you get? The, how do you get the fans excited now? Did you see Tennessee has the fifth pick from the Rams? Or not right. for, yeah, for the no. Rams. Yeah. They have fifth and 18th. That's pretty good. To go with... I don't know, a pretty nice team. Do us a favor. Win the division next year, Tennessee. Put us out of this misery. Where They were definitely the best team. Where your division leader is locked into that Saturday early game, just in the oh, playoffs. God. Yeah, we're going to talk already. about those games in Enough. a second. The uh, the one other thing I wanted to ask you was, what was your favorite Georgia Dome memory? That's it, huh? That was it. Do you remember, can you name three things that happened in the Georgia Dome? Thurman Thomas forgot his helmet okay. against the Cowboys. Um, I feel like there was a bad missed Morton Anderson field goal or something. I don't know. That was in Minnesota. See, I can't. <laughs> they don't call the Minnesota Georgia Dome. Michael Vick, when he beat the Packers and cost everyone a lot of money, including us. Was that, that was a in night Lambeau. Game? Yeah, was that, that was in Lambeau. That was in Lambeau. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I don't know. I mean, uh, there wasn't must... there like Matt Ryan? Didn't he come back to beat Russell Wilson like four years ago? I think he did. In, Russell Wilson in Atlanta. Took the year I was like when Russell Wilson was a rookie. Right. 
I was totally into him. That it was like a right. running thing the whole year, mm. but I actually kind of believed there it. There had to be a uh, SummerSlam or a WrestleMania there or something. Nothing? <laughs> the Olympics, maybe? Oh. Mike Vick? Peter protests? I can't think. They were like, we're saying goodbye to the Georgia Dome. I was like, we're, oh, okay. God, it seems like it's a new stadium. Jesus. Yeah, new thing. 25, 25 uh, years of the Georgia Dome, and somehow we're ready for another one. Hey, are you hiring, Sal? Yeah. Do you know where I'm to hiring. post your job to find the best candidates? Well, posting your job in one place isn't enough anymore. For the perfect hire, you need to post your job on all the top job sites, and now you can. ZipRecruiter.com. Post your job to 100-plus job sites, including social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. Find candidates in any city or industry. Post once. Watch your qualified candidates roll into Zip Recruiter's easy-to-use interface. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Quickly screen candidates. Rate them. Hire the right person fast. Find out today why Zip Recruiter has been used by over 1 million businesses. In the meantime, my listeners can post jobs on Zip Recruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash BS. We might have to do this to find our West Coast social media head, Joe Fuentes. Once again, <laughs> ZipRecruiter.com slash BS. All right. Well, so, ZipRecruiter is nice if I may just jump in for a second. You but, think they uh, should up with the NFL coaches or no? Yeah, why not? But, you know, if you can't do that, our, our friend Daniel found the CFO for his company on Facebook. So, Oh, that's true. Yeah, did, so that just as a backup. You go ZipRecruiter first, but then. <laughs> Daniel did, did send an <laughs> email to all his friends looking for a CFO. That was great. Yeah. He got Cody points for that. He did. He ended up third. Yeah. You did the Character of the Year Awards last week. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My friends, Ken and Harry, are at the top. They're just monsters our agent I, james baby doll dixon he's also a monster he brad mulcahy is great brad's great yeah so i would say this is the worst saturday of playoff games we've ever had saturday oh yeah round one i'm not we, excited about the whole batch you knew right away that raiders texans was going to be the first early saturday game mm -hmm. i've never been more convinced of anything in my entire life than than that was going to be what right. we call the shakies game right because we go to Shakey's. That's where our banquet is, our fantasy banquet. Our fantasy and, uh, football banquet. And there's always a terrible game on. The one year there wasn't was Pittsburgh-Denver when Tebow oh, did that was the uh, overtime touchdown. That was good. So you compare it to that, which is like the best you can do with the early Saturday And game. it's usually Houston, Cincinnati at Houston or Kansas City at Houston. But that Houston team usually has J.J. Watt. There's something to be excited about. This is McGloin or, or Connor Cook against Osweiler or, or Tom Savage. Savage. I can't ever remember a worse quarterback battle in the playoffs. And I'm going to go this far. I like to bet on every playoff game, yeah. put things in teases. I'm Skip staying it. away. You're skipping it. Yeah. Staying away. Right. We're running out of games, though, is the problem. You've got to bet everything. I, I mean, I'll pick it, but I can't imagine putting money on this. I'm sure I'll talk myself into it. But This is a play-in game, basically. This is UNC Nashville against uh, Mount St. Mary's. The oh, like the Tuesday, yeah, the Tuesday March Madness game? The winner game. plays Kansas, yeah. It's really bad. We were robbed of our freebie all year since week four. We're like, all right, Houston or someone bad is going to win the division. We'll take Kansas City or Oakland, whoever's on the road. They'll give a touchdown. We'll put them in a money line parlay with one of it's the other money. three favorites. We were robbed. So I'm sorry, Raiders fans, but Derek Carr really screwed me and Bill more than you guys. I don't know what to do with this game because – you're taking out the quarterbacks completely. So now it's running game, defense, home field advantage. Houston mm -hmm. will have the home field advantage. Yeah. Which is good. That crowd is pretty iffy. That crowd checks out pretty quickly. And that crowd gets real quiet. And, you know, most football stadiums now aren't very good with the with the exception of a select few. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ones that stands out for me is just super it's not quiet. Good? Really? Yeah. Like you can see when you're flicking games and it's just like dead silence. Yeah. And they just don't like the team. They haven't had a lot to Not a cheer ton to about. be excited about. No, I don't yeah. blame them. Right. But uh, I just think, like, if Osweiler starts that game and starts off badly. Ugh. I don't even want to watch this. The crowd checks out. Also, how many Raider fans are going to be there? Oh, Do the Raider fans travel for this? Is it like a Raiders, Steelers, Packer fan they situation? They do a nice job for that. Yeah. yeah. Could we have 25,000 Raider hmm. fans there? Vegas, thinks, Vegas doesn't think so. Let's just put it that way. We were watching football yesterday, and I, I said to the people I was with, I'm like 20 minutes away from saying that Matt McGloin looks pretty good. Like, he was throwing right. nice pat. Like, he had he has arm strength, uh -huh. and he's not inaccurate. And yeah. then he got hurt. Yeah. And then they just kept showing him with a sad look on right. his face. 
I had the Raiders by two and a half in Houston. I had Raiders by three. You were off five and a half points and you won. It's Houston by three. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> now you're betting it. <laughs> wow. Now you're putting so Matt McGloin. So that's just all home field advantage. Now you're putting Matt McGloin in the teaser. Doing, you're, now you're doing what you told me not to do. Plus nine. What's amazing is that <laughs> we watched this game in Mexico City like eight weeks ago. Oh, right. That's and right. there's nothing to take away from it whatsoever. Because right. Derek Carr was in it. Osweiler was playing a little better back then. It was before he lost his confidence. A couple bad spots in that game, but yeah. Right. I mean, Houston couldn't beat Tennessee yesterday. You well, could say that they didn't have much to play for, right. but when Osweiler came in, I would say Osweiler had a shitload to he play for. He was trying. Yeah. yeah. He had that QB sneak. He goes in. He gets hit by seven guys. I don't like this game. And I'll tell you this. I don't remember a playoff of a, a, a wild card weekend where there are eight teams. Only one of them is hot right now, the Packers. The other seven either right. lost this week or last week or struggled to win this week, right? Like who, who else is – they're all like flatlining right now. So Very strange. Houston's D. They gave up 27 to the Raiders, 21 to the Chargers, 21 to the Packers. That's pretty good. 22 to the Colts, 20 to the Jags, 10 to the Bengals. And then, uh, and then twenty four to the Titans yesterday. So, my takeaway from that is that it's a solid defense. You, they, they, they'll keep people even without a lot. I would say yeah. they would keep a team with a bad quarterback under twenty, mm -hmm. right? So that means we're looking at a seventeen fourteen, yeah. seventeen thirteen, nineteen sixteen, thirteen ten type game. And that would favor home field and defense. Right. So maybe it does make sense. Yeah, and you're not going to give three, though. If you do have to bet this game, are you giving three? Raiders defense, thirty last few weeks, gave up 32 to the Panthers, 24 wow. to the Bills, 21 to the Chiefs, 16 to the Chargers, 25 to the Colts, 24 to the Broncos. Not a very good defense. And the advanced metrics back it up. Uh, is it, is this a case of first score wins kind of thing? If if Hopkins gets free for long touchdowns, this game like, makes you sad. The like, I hear the sadness in your like voice. It. I don't like it. It's a bummer. We're running out of games. It, sh it shouldn't. Count. I know. We only have eleven playoff games to work with. They should and put this four, one's a throw. I'm telling you, Baltimore and Denver should be on the field at the same time. They should have all four teams on the field. Have one one emerge. Do you think it should be like a like a WWE pay per view? Yeah, where it's like uh, Oakland. Was scheduled to play today, but in their place, <laughs> the Cincinnati Bengals. They show up in masks. I like it. What a terrible game. I'd like to apologize to America in advance. This and then the second one isn't good either. This is at night, Saturday night, Detroit at Seattle. That's the worst Saturday night playoff game I think we've ever had for round one. I thought they were going to steal Giants-Green Bay for Saturday night. No, they, they, they're giving that to Buck Aikman. They'd steal from Fox You and I could have guessed though, these yeah. We could have guessed the exact sequence. Seattle goes sport. Saturday night. Yeah, that Giants Packers was a guaranteed Sunday game. All right. And your Patriots play Saturday night now. We know that for next week. And my We're going to talk about that. Oh, we should talk about that now. Cowboys play late Sunday. The Patriots are guaranteed to go against Matt McGloin, mm -hmm. Connor Cook, who looked terrible yesterday, Tom Savage, or Brock Osweiler, mm -hmm. or Matt Moore, or. Possibly Ryan Tannehill with a limp. Possibly. Those are the six quarterbacks that are going to be in Foxborough. It's amazing. We're we, talking, we're not going to guess the line now, but you have to put it close to two touchdowns. You I think to. if I think if Miami is in there, I don't think it I don't think it gets that high. Tannehill is the best case and lowest number scenario. Is is Matt Moore not bad or am I nuts? No, he's what okay. am I what am I We'll get there. He wasn't I great. don't think they play Tannehill. I think it's going to be Matt Moore. Really? Yeah, oh, unless Tannehill's healthy, I would play Matt Moore. Not even this week? There's talk about him playing this week. I wouldn't. I wouldn't right. unless he was healthy. I, I can't think of anything worse than a hobbled Ryan Tannehill. Well, you'll see it Saturday early. <laughs> so Detroit, Seattle. I have – this is probably too high. I do not think the Lions are a good football team. It was partially vindicated yesterday by that Packers performance. Ugh. Seahawks by nine and a half in Seattle. And I don't even think Seattle's a good football team. I went seven and it's seven and a half. I see you win. So I get that. We, we're tied going into Sunday. Uh, so they're they're just, they're begging for us to tease that. They are. They're begging us. Now, you and I have to figure out, is Detroit done screwing us? Or do they have one, one more, just one more gut wrencher in them? Here's the thing. We, even though we lost that bet, 
we won big on the Rousey bet. Right. So I feel like okay. it all evened out. We won on the Seahawks. <laughs> I know. I went they, a little bigger than you did the on the Steelers playoff. Rousey. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. But it was at least it tempered the blow for me. Why is Rousey not arm barring everybody to death now? Why Rousey, is she going toe to toe? Rousey needs to get a real trainer. Yeah. I, she needs tactics. Right. You can't just wander towards somebody like a walking dead zombie. Uh, she just like was determined. Like the she just has got to punched knock in the face. Out. She's uh, just wobbling toward her. That no, Nunez will never lose to a blonde woman again. Uh, she'll she never so they'll angry. even put her up against the blonde. I already felt good about that pick. And then when they said that she made two hundred thousand and Rousey made three million, yeah. I was like, I texted you, I wanted to put more money on Nunez. Yeah. It's like, oh my God. Yeah, she's, she's gonna, gonna like be more so per angry or something. So Seahawks. What do you think the Seahawks' home record is without looking? They've blown three games there, right? Five and three? No, they're seven and one. Ah. But it doesn't seem like it, right? You'd never think they were seven and one. I was about to come on here, like, they lost their home swagger. It's a different team. Seven and one. It's that team's a mess. I've watched a lot of Seahawks. Yeah. They have Richard Sherman returning punts. Yeah. They have no third down back. That guy Collins at running back is just not very and, good. And now it's Collins or Rawls against Zenner. This is a bad running back matchup. You have a really bad quarterback matchup in the early game, really bad running back in the in the late game Saturday. They have uh, – the offensive line is still abysmal. I watched yesterday with Danny Kelly from The Ringer. who used to be the chief Seahawks blogger yeah. in SB Nation and knows the team inside out. And he's just so – so uh, not confident in the Seattle team because yeah, they've they've lost too many guys mm -hmm. and their O line wasn't good to begin with. But Wilson's still great. Yeah, and you know the Stafford thing that the middle finger. You know when he's talking about it, he has to wear a glove to keep the splint in place. Like right. I didn't I didn't think he was very accurate in that game yesterday. Their defense isn't good. I thought he threw some good balls. No? He threw some good balls and then he sailed some other ones. His I don't know. His best one was a Hail Mary. How about Al Michaels all over the oh, gambling yeah. talk? Oh. That Hail Mary put the game over. That was he so plays great. it up now. He must oh, have so people good. that mentioned it to him. Yeah, it's so good. He's like, he, wow, uh, overwhelming uh <laughs> pass. <yeah. laughs> the uh I don't know. I, ju I just don't think Detroit's good. I can't imagine they would go into Seattle and win. Normally, yeah. there's there's a scenario where this is a this is an upset game to watch out for. Mm -hmm. I don't think the Lions are the team. Like if this was, even if this was that piece of shit Redskins team, even them, I would be like, <laughs> oh, well, maybe they could score, and it's like a 34-31. I know Cousins cost us a lot of money. I just hope he cost himself money too. I hope he costs in his next con contract. Hope he costs himself three more. Once you tie that game, you can't lose to the Giants. You can't throw an interception on first down there. It was such. A, it was one of those QB interceptions you could see coming before yeah. he threw it. He's scrambling. He's throwing across his body. Right. Had the guy open for a split so second. So bad. I want to know what happened to their run game, though. I know, right? If I'm a Redskins fan, I, I'm I'm leaving that game going. What happened to Fat Rob? Fat Rob, we were running the ball down people's throats for like a week. And then all of a sudden, that guy Thompson was in all the time. And right. Fat Rob could only run for one yard of carry. And did they have three points? Like, the, did they kick a field goal to start the fourth quarter? Was that their first points? I'm so sick over that game. The Redskins. They, they were awful. Sick. They, were, they were really embarrassing. All right, let's move to Sunday. Before we do. Oh. I want to talk about Vis <coughs> Vista Print. They are all about supporting small business owners. That's why they're offering 500 business cards for just $9.99. If you go to vistaprint.com and enter my promo code BS at checkout, Vistaprint offers tons of custom products for home and office needs. Business cards, postcards, flyer banners, flyers, banners, apparel, invitations, you name it. Do you have a business card, Sal? I don't, no. You should think about it. Yeah? They Do you guarantee have they love your products. I, I, I don't. I actually should get Vistaprint. All right. I need a business card. See, this card. worked out nicely. Yeah. You can personalize <laughs> them. You can personalize other marketing materials, customize the text, color, backsides, and more for an even higher quality card. Upgrade to a thicker stock or add a brilliant finish like metallic spot gloss raised print. Right now, again, offering 500 custom business cards for $9.99, which is a 50% saving over regular site pricing. All you have to do is visit vistaprint.com, design your custom business cards, enter my code BS at checkout. Go to vistaprint.com order today all right sunday oh, i have bad news for you i'm not going to the shakies thing no you're going of i can't you know. i have a soccer thing the for my saturday. daughter it's not sunday you just said Sunday. on saturday i have, I have a soccer thing oh, with come my daughter on. why what time 
It's all day. I'm, I'm gone. She has 10 soccer things a week. I'm gone. You could skip this. This is it. These are about the glory times with my daughter before she turns on me. Oh, come on. She's got like turned, a year left. I talked to her at New Year's. She turned she, on We were you. fine. She said she, she turned said on you. She right. turned, damn yeah, it. You can't go. You don't want to see Brad spill uh, orange soda do, on the, on the not, trophy I'm and everything? not going to no? be in the Los Angeles area. Oh, man. That's Can bad. I send a proxy? Yeah, I think you should send a proxy. Imitator? <laughs> you should have to eat that terrible food. I should it's have to fair. pay for the Shakers dinner because I didn't go. All, All right, right, Sunday. Well, that stinks. Miami at Pittsburgh. So, all four home teams aren't winning because that never happens. Well, let me show. Just it's funny you say that. Last year, all four road teams won in the wild card round. Green I don't Bay. ever remember all four home teams winning. I'd have to do the. I'll do the research before yeah. Friday's podcast with uh, Lombardi and House. But uh, so somebody's going to upset the apple cart. You think it could be this one? I mean, you well, can't even count that first game. I don't know. But that's a. Here's here's my question. A lot of people really like the Steelers team, mm. and I don't see it. And I don't know whether I don't see it because they're they're on my corner with the Patriots, or I don't know. I I trust my instincts a little bit here. So Steelers have won. They were four and five, and they finished eleven and five. They won seven straight. Mm -hmm. They lost to your team pretty convincingly. Mm -hmm. You watch that game. Yeah. I didn't think they were in the ballpark with the Cowboys in that game. Since then, they beat the Browns. They beat that shitty Colts team. They beat the Giants, which was a nice win at home. Yep. That was evil Eli, though, that day. Right. It was Eli just doing Eli things. He threw the pass. You knew it. Was he was, he was awful. They beat the Bills. They came back to beat the Bengals in a mm -hmm. game that would frustrated the hell out of both of us. That sure. I still don't know what the Bengals were doing in the second half of that game. They beat the Ravens in week 16 in a game that if the guy doesn't get in the end zone and just gets tripped and falls on the two-yard line, yeah. the Ravens win, and the Steelers are fighting to get into the playoffs. And then they beat the Browns. I don't see it. I get the Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown thing. As we've said many times, Roethlisberger, the ball to me doesn't look like it's coming out of his hand correctly. No way. I don't think their defense is very good. Pretty soft. Flacco had Tough guys players, open that but, whole Ravens game. Yeah. Shazier's great. They have a couple guys. Mitchell's scary. He's a little TJ Wardish. But I think you can throw in that team. I think Miami can hang with them. So anyway, I had uh, I had Steelers by, what did I say, nine and a half? You said nine. I said nine. I think the line's too high. I, I actually think this should be like a six-point line. Well, that's what I want. I said six and a half. You said nine. It, it is nine and a half. Yeah, You're right. And that's like an extra field goal because it's the Steelers and it's Matt Moore. But I don't think they're going to bother Matt Moore. Well, let me ask they you They don't this. have the kind of team that's going to be like, oh, my God, they've been in Matt Moore's face all day. That's not what the Steelers team is. But you used to do this pl uh, this playoff manifesto thing. And I loved right. it. How many caveats does Matt Moore on the road violate for this playoff manifesto? Oh, a lot. Yeah. It's Matt Moore versus Roethlisberger. It's not great. Right. I like Gase, though. And I, I think Ajay is good. I think Jarvis Landry is good. Like I think Miami has good yeah, players. Yeah, there's no guarantee Sue's that Pittsburgh good. is going to stop this offense. They it's have good cornerbacks. They lucked mm. out with this converted receiver that they put a cornerback. He's been good. Uh, Sometimes there's an angry team that stepped. Like I said, seven of these eight teams have not been hot at all. Uh, sometimes somebody steps up. And Pittsburgh lost to Miami. In a brutal game, I don't know what how they. Remember, it was shocking that they lost. Um, maybe, maybe they just explode. That's the other thing. So, then the case against Miami, other than Matt Moore, mm -hmm. is um, the all time cream puff schedule. They did the same schedule that they just. Yeah, all of their wins were. I think the Steelers were the only good win they had. They beat the Cardinals by three. They beat they the beat. Bill. That, that's a tough. That's the only thing I say. They went to Buffalo and won that game. But I, I'm just looking at who they beat. They only beat one team that finished 500 or above, and it was the Steelers. That's who what's they wrong with these playoff teams this this first weekend. We we have in the back of our mind, or maybe not even so far back, four games that we've seen all these teams play that were stinkers, absolute stink bombs. Like the Ravens slaughtered the Dolphins, and that was like four right. weeks ago. That wasn't that long ago. Right. Steelers look terrible against so many, even teams that they beat two weeks ago. My only point is, I don't think the Steelers should be favored by that many points in a home playoff game against really anybody, unless it was like Matt McGoin or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. They've only, they killed the Chiefs in week four. They beat the Jets by 18. 
to beat the Browns by 15, the Colts by 21, the Giants by 10. Those were their only double figure wins. Giants was a good win. Giants was a good win. That was their best win. But again, it was evil Eli. It was one of those Eli games that you knew pretty much right away. You just expect that Roethlisberger's in sync with Antonio Brown at this point in the year. And, he, and he's not. Like, that. he he's waited not. the whole Ravens game for it to happen. You know, it's just like, oh. Rodgers is coming out God, a he has that. Eli yeah, Rodgers. Rodgers yeah. has been pretty good. Bell is frightening. Sure, yeah. Sue's going to do stuff. I think we'll be able to tell right away. Sue scared me with about five minutes left. Something, he got into it with Blunt. Oh, yeah. And uh, Blunt, like, ripped his face mask, and Smart. it was a whole thing, but they kept both of them in. I'm like, oh, my mm -hmm. God, Sue's going to take out, like, Edelman. On That's the it. Like, it, there's no scarier angry guy than yeah. Sue. Yeah, right. I was like, he's just going to break somebody's leg. But I think because <laughs> they were about to make the playoffs, he didn't want to get suspended. Five minutes left in the season. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. If their season they're, was over, I think he would have just taken out seven somebody. and eight, it's a different story. How about uh, Akib Talib ripping... Crabtree's chain off during the game. That was unbelievable. It was like petty crimes going on in the middle of the games. Akeem Tlaib, like, it's unbelievable that he's been able to continue to stay in the field and have an NFL yeah. career. Like, he like he shot himself. Right. I still he really think seems you're like the sketchiest him. guy in the league. Patriots are going to somehow sign him uh, sometime this week. He was good for us. You except got Malcolm he... Floyd scored for you. Oh, Michael Floyd. No, Michael Floyd, rather. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little conflicted about that. Yeah. Did you see the video? The video of what? The yeah. guy was asleep at an intersection. He was so oh. drunk, he was like actually asleep. No, really? The cops like banging on his window. Wow. And Michael Floyd's like not waking up for like 45 seconds. And the cop's like, can you please wake up? Can you please get out of the car? Like oh, that's no. how drunk he was. Right. And then he wasn't honest with the Colts about it. So they are the uh, Cardinals. So they waved him. But then, you you know, all the stuff was like what a good teammate he is. Mm -hmm. All these guys in the Cardinals vouch for him. Came to the Pats. He's been working his ass off. Yeah. And to be honest, we've never had a receiver quite like him. What do you care? He's a drunk. It's so you, you have friends with 50 drunks. <laughs> well, that's true. That's, that's how I've rationalized yeah. it. <laughs> but yeah, he's this big physical. Right. The only guy we've ever kind of had like him was David Givens during the Brady era. Mm -hmm. Just the big. But he's he's more physical than Givens was. We really, Brady's never really had somebody like this. You had LaFell, but he didn't pan. He out. wasn't physical he wasn't? like this guy. No. No. Yeah. All right. So you like it sounds like you like the Steelers. You're I'm gonna put them in a, in a parlay. I'm not saying anything. I, I'm Okay. I, I I kinda do. I kinda do right now. Just probably to win, but Giants at Green Bay. Giants at Green Bay. Before we do this, last one. Hint water. You know you should drink eight glasses of water a day. Did you know that? I did know that. Is that true? Yeah, you should. Water's really good for okay. you. Most people don't drink eight waters, eight glasses of water a day because it's bland and they want something that tastes better. They drink soda. They drink all this crap. Drink Hint water instead. Hint is pure water infused with the taste of fresh fruit flavors like watermelon, peas, peach. I'm listening to you speak. You can read a watermelon, fruit? peach, mango, grapefruit, and many more. The Saint water is making me thirsty. That's why I can't speak. No sugar, no chemicals. Great tasting, all natural fruit flavored water. And you don't have to carry heavy cases of water back from the store. Have it delivered right to your doorstep. Right now, new customers get a single variety pack shipped directly to their door, <laughs> including three bottles each of Hint's most popular flavors. Four of them, pineapple, watermelon, crisp apple, and blackberry. Let me finish I'm sorry, I had a stroke. I'll finish this for you. My favorite fruits, watermelons, <laughs> peas, and straw bunnies. <laughs> Normally it's $24, but get it for 15 bucks at drinkhint.com slash BS. Put in code BS. Drinkhint.com slash BS, code BS. I'm actually legitimately thirsty. That's why I'm having trouble <laughs> reading this. Some water. All right, last one. The Giants. best game of the bunch. This is a great game. It really is. I'm really excited for this game. Well, the Giants problem Packers. is I have a best, like whoever I root for, <coughs> I know I'm going to get screwed here on the Cowboys end. Who do you root for? Do you get the Giants out of there if you're a Cowboy fan? Yeah, you want the Giants out. You want Rodgers coming to Dallas. Yeah. Because the Giants-Cowboys is probably, my you, friends and I were talking about, it's probably a 21-17 game no matter what. You get the Maybe Giants the Cowboys out. could score. Take on, the Giants out. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Actually, hate. what you should do is you should be rooting for the Lions. Well, I know. But the problem with having a buy is whoever you play is kind of hot. You know, they're coming off a win. They have momentum. So if the Lions beat, went to Seattle and won, I don't know. That's as not much as I don't like that Lions team, I don't trust the Seahawks at all. And I, I could see like a yeah. 10 to 3, they're up, and you could get talk yourself into it right. pretty fast. Right. But this one is 
I don't know. I mean, you say Green Bay, sure, they've done great things to get to the playoffs. They're the only one of the eight teams that's hot, but those corners are so banged up now. The Packers three and a half was my pick. I said six, and it opened at seven and a half, and it's now four. So you win. Wow. You win the week. Why would it open at seven and a half? The giant money that's came idiotic. pouring in. I think I, the Giants are like legitimately good. They're yeah. built for Lambo seven degrees. I think they're more built for Lambo seven degrees than the Packers are. I'm excited for this game. That's a great it's, game. It's gonna be really good. So quickly on the Packers and everybody raving about how hot they are. I just want to point out who they beat. Because they did lose to the Titans well, you can't by 20. Do this for every team and say nobody ever beat anyone good. There's got to be somebody good. I just I'm all I'm saying is I keep hearing about how red hot the Packers are. They beat the Eagles. They beat the Texans. They killed the Seahawks. They barely beat the Bears. They beat the Vikings. They beat the Lions. Congratulations. Well, they, they, you have one. You have one win that I I respect out of those six. But they're you know they're the Packers. They're a defensive. They're a December team. They won all the games they were supposed to at the end. That's fine. But they they were ten and six, and now their secondary is really banged up. I didn't feel they lucked out in winning any of those last. Any of these games. I don't think they month. looked out either. Yeah, so I think they had the Bears was a, a little job. lucky. Like they blew yeah, that I guess game. So. It was yeah. it should have at least gone to overtime. Right. I don't know. I don't think the Packers I think Rodgers is really good mm -hmm. and they can throw the ball. But I think this Giants team's really good. I, I think that line should be three. It's gonna be fun. Let's not forget the Giants were awful two Thursdays ago against Philly. Well, evil Eli is always mm -hmm. always lurking. The other thing with the Giants is that and it's only it's weird because it's only happened twice, but Eli has gone into Lambeau and won in cold weather mm -hmm. twice. I think he's two and zero oh there. Do you feel any team has a coaching advantage? Uh, Seattle, Out of these first eight, Seattle's like the only one right now, right? I mean, if you could say Seattle, even so, Pete Carroll, as long as something stupid doesn't happen. They were pretty there. I think their offensive play calling was really goofy this year. I don't, I have no mm -hmm. idea why they don't use Jimmy Graham more. Right. When I watched him, I'm like, Jay, I, I was saying to Danny Kelly yesterday, I think they should use Jimmy Graham like the Pats used to use Hernandez, like as an H back and move him around. And he's always in a different spot. And when he's on and when they find him, they seem unstoppable. They seem unstoppable. Yeah. Right. I don't get it. I, yeah, I don't think there's a huge coaching advantage. The last thing I wanted to go over with you. Does everyone in LA have a cough? I think so. Yeah. Super Bowl ads. Oh, uh, oh yeah. I forgot to print these. So the Pats are plus one eighty, which is basically, you know, round two they're going to win. So are so they even? At, are they even to win the AFC or a little less? Are they like I minus one twenty? Yeah, something? something like that. Maybe that's the bet. No, I think that their odds are better than that. There might be like minus two hundred. We can look this up. It's got to be, yeah. So the computer's dead. Your your computer died. So the Pats plus one eighty, Falcons plus nine fifty, and the Chiefs ten to one. I think are the three best Super Bowl bets, and I I wouldn't recommend any of them because I don't think the odds are good enough. Mm -hmm. But I think the Chiefs ten to one is a really good bet because they win they win round two. They probably have the Steelers coming to them. They'd have to go into New England, and then they'd have to win the Super Bowl. So the odds aren't even that good. But I think those odds are better than the Steelers at 9-1. to one. The Steelers have to go to Kansas City and beat Kansas City. I don't understand why their odds are worse than Kansas City. I love the Chiefs. But don't you wish those odds were like 18-1 to one and not 10-1? to one? Yeah. I think people know that. So then the Falcons are plus 950, Packers plus 950. Your team's plus 375, which seems about right. For the whole thing? Yeah. yeah. Giants are 18-1. to one. Steelers nine to one, which is ludicrous, and then the Seahawks are fourteen to one. So okay, you're right. The Patriots are minus two hundred for the AFC. Right. So let's say they're gonna win that. So first you're basically game. just don't, don't betting have... round three minus so, two hundred. So what would there be but round three if they're home against? They'll be like six seven point favorites. Worst against... case scenario against Pittsburgh, they'll be six seven. Kansas I, City. I think it's gonna be the Chiefs. So they'll be like minus three hundred. Yeah, I guess they get you. It's the same way. I think that I think go heavy on the Pats to win the AFC and then have some money on the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. 
And then when the Chiefs lose in the Super Bowl, it'll be hilarious. I think Vegas has completely figured out these future bets. Really? And they've yeah. made it so that there's no value whatsoever. The best value I saw was the NFC is now three and a half to, to, in the Super Bowl. Plus three and a half? Yeah. What's Atlanta, do you say, to win the Super Bowl? They're in plus 950. That's so not that like means those odds aren't even so that are they good. four or five to one to win the NFC? I can look. No, they're, they're going to be... They're going to, to be one. plus three forty. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So they'd be home for. So maybe Seattle. those are the best odds. Yeah, that's not bad. Because basically, they're guaranteed. I don't to think be, anyone stops that offense, and they're not having. They don't have to go in cold Atlanta. weather. Don't uh, place. No, that's not bad. So do you want to make that our Don Julio shot of the week, or do you want to let's go, do it? You don't want to do Oscars. I don't know. Okay, I haven't announced the Oscars yet. All right, we'll do Oscars next Nothing week. Nothing against my beloved Cowboys, but I think Atlanta, I think that's the best value, NFC, plus 340. All and right. let me just say this. Good job, Tony Romo, yesterday. Oh, yeah. You know? I think if that game, people say it's meaningless, I think it proves something. If you want, you know, if you want uh, two field goals and two and a half quarters, Mark Sanchez is your guy. If you want one field goal for four drives, Dak Prescott's your guy. If you want to score every drive... Touchdown? Tony Romo. You're and, still in the Romo camp. Antonio Romero Romo. That's your man. I love it. I thought he looked great. 134.4 passer rating. He had, his arm looked great. <laughs> his arm strength was everywhere, everything you'd want. He's I mean, that guy future. next year is going to go to Denver or Houston or wherever the hell he goes, and he'll be one of like the seven best quarterbacks in the league. Do you think he should go? Do you think he should retire yes. or go? No, I think he should go to a team that's relatively close. You think like, he should? I think Denver, he would have helped Denver. Denver or Houston. I think those are the two. Denver, Houston. Um, there was one more. I, I thought maybe Arizona, but that that offensive line's not great. Not great Buffalo? for him. He wouldn't want to. He want to be there. able to win a division in one year. What about the Chargers if Phil Rivers retires? Interesting. That's I feel like Phil Rivers could retire. Is he going to retire? If they moved to LA, he's got eight kids. That could be fun. Imagine moving eight kids. Yeah. Well, that's why you don't. Or try to live in San Diego and commute to LA every day, which he probably would do, or to get a helicopter. Well, you or something. have eight kids; you never want to retire. You I, if me? I had eight kids, I would. I wouldn't even live in the country. <laughs> I would. I wouldn't even live with any of them. <laughs> I'd be living three thousand miles away. Come you can't the even skip a soccer game. What are you kidding? I know. Me for well, I only have it. two kids. So our Don Julio shot of the week. We like the Falcons plus 340 to win the NFC yeah. as the best odds. Don Julio, the world's original handcrafted tequila with multiple unique tequilas, including Don Julio 1942, the best luxury tequila you'll ever drink. And uh, and Diageo's Dan Sanborn loves the shot of the week. He's the best. He really enjoys it. Uh, I'll tell you what's not the best. Cousin Sal shirt thing. <laughs> uh, winless last two weeks, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it back. You, you, heard, it. you heard the confidence in my voice this last hour. I'm going to get it with these games. We're gonna what, do it. Have you gotten any death threats or anything? Lots of them. I can't even look. I can't even. Thank oh, God these bad? are free. Th thank God these are free. Yeah. You know, I think I need to do what what Apollo Creed and Duke did <laughs> for Rocky. I need to bring you back to one of the <laughs> one of the downtown LA gyms. Oh, interesting. Get your roots back. Right. Why don't you look around and be like, you see the hunger? You see right. the hunger in those eyes, Rock? You haven't had that for some I like time. That. Yeah, yeah. If, my, if my wife gave a shit about anything I did, she'd take me to the beach and scream at me like Adrian. But <laughs> she did. No, she Adrian, that was Adrian's only great moment. It was really good. She was, for the most part, really a wet blanket and a horrible wife yeah. uh, and not supportive at all. But in Rocky <laughs> Three, she was supportive for about an hour. <laughs> Why? You're human, aren't you? What do we need? We got money. <laughs> we got cars. What are you afraid of? <laughs> oh, man. I'm afraid, too. Uh, all right. Jimmy uh, Kimmel Live, the Bachelor special tonight. Check it out. Joel McHale is a guest. And Nick Vial. What's his name? Vial? Nick Vial. Vial, right? Yeah. The Bachelor himself. At the Cousin Sal on Twitter. All that good stuff. And on Channel 33, Julia Lippman is bringing back Bachelor Party, uh, her podcast for the Bachelor She's season. Fun. And there's going to be some great guests, including my wife. Oh, nice. There's a lot of rumors about a Dave Jacoby comeback. For, really? For one podcast, which <laughs> has everyone in a tizzy. Uh, I might go on there once, but yeah, Bachelor Party, definitely check that out. Check out TheRinger.com. Don't forget about uh, the Channel 33 podcast, the Sports Movie Hall of Fame podcast, which has been really fun to do so far. And also, I have a new column coming up uh, at some point this week. Thanks to SeatGeek. Thanks to everybody. And we'll be back on the BS podcast later this week. Good job, I am. Good job, I am.